Another head of the Folkestone Air Show alongside the Red Arrows before touching down on Lay's Promenade at one o'clock. Amelia Earhart stepped out from her faithful Lockheed Electra to rapturous applause. When talking to the press, Amelia said that in the air she had a perfect view of the White Cliffs of Dover. After that, she spent the afternoon in the company of the nurses of the St. John Ambulance Service. One imagines that in many years' time, they shall look back upon the summer of 1938 and remember this day forever. Well, okay, Nancy, you've waited for this day for a long time. Keep calm, keep calm. Nothing to fret over. Just shake her hand, ask her how she is, nod and smile and leave it at that. Afternoon. What's your name then? Oh, we got a hugger here. <laughs> name? Oh, um, oh heavens. What is it? Nancy. Yes, sorry. Well, Nancy, it's nice to meet you. I'm Amelia. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> like being in the service then? Live in the dream? Well, more like my mother's dream, really. Nancy, can I ask you a question? You might not quite understand, but I feel I can trust you. Is that all right? Of course, yes, of course. I need you to deliver a message to the doctor. Can you do that for me? The doctor? I'm sorry, I don't know who you mean. Doctor who? like temperature gauges. I could give you a guided tour of the rest, if you like. Plenty more where this came from. I'm still acclimatising. This room, this chamber, is enough for me, thank you kindly. Do you have a wardrobe? Where do you think I keep my clothes? <laughs> right then. 1941, yeah? You can do it then. Take me home. I can do anything, within reason. Go over here. Surely you should have a crew on board, a navigator, engineer, rather than do all this by yourself. Well, I'll leave the actual flying to her. Her? The TARDIS. Ah, that's rather sweet. Strange, but sweet. Right, hold that down. Is it frightfully important? Could well be. Yeah. Oh, well, what's that? I'm afraid it's no use asking me. It's your time machine. Well, there's a subject we could have a lengthy debate about. Couldn't be a yellow standby unless... Of course! Don't do that! Nancy, stay here. Uh, stay exactly where you are. Whatever you do, do not let go of that lever. Why? What happens if I let go? No idea. I'm trying to remember what it does. It'll come to me, I'm sure. Oh, honestly? Well? Just as I thought. My alarm clock. I'm sorry? 1937. That's where we are. When we are. Ah, that's the trouble with drifting through the vortex. Wanted to take the M6, ended up taking the M1. So you can't even steer this? We must be on you, but we cannot see you. Fuel is running low. Be in a to reach you by radio. We are flying at a thousand feet. We are running north and south. Do you know what that is? A recording? It's current. Well, some sort of transmission then. A transmission I've been waiting to find for a long, long time. Wait. I know that voice. Which means, if I'm right, after all these years, we're going to find her. Oh, Lord, we're up in the sky. <laughs> How far up are we? Well, you heard the message. A thousand feet. 
Oh, for heaven's sake, can't you close the doors? I agree. There is a bit of a draft, isn't there? Anyway, this is where the signal was coming from. Pacific Ocean, right below us. So, this message, it came from some craft. An aircraft, above the Pacific. But where is it? I think... It's right there. It's heading straight for us. Can't we take evasive action? Wait. What for? Wait. We can't just sit here, do nothing. Trust me. I have no reason to. Doctor! What? It's gone. <laughs> Blink and you'll miss it. But it was there, coming straight at us. Where could it have possibly gone? There. Another one. Oh, no, no, no. Look closer. No, not another one. The same plane. It must have gone round in a loop. It's like it's playing with us. The needle returns to the start of the song. It's like a stuck record or a recording. Which means I can do this. It stopped. You stopped it. Somehow, I refuse to ask how. Pause the recording. It's a remote control. And rewind. Just a few frames. Oh, no, forward again. Now, back a bit. There we are. Just frozen there like a fly in amber. Even the smoke and the lightning, they're frozen as well. This isn't real. Oh, it's real. Just not what I was looking for. Not who. I was looking for. Who? There's something generating this recording. Oh, even rotate the image. 360, user friendly. I could never have imagined. Wait, go back. Oh, which way? Right. No, left. That's it, look. Oh. Oh dear. But there's somebody just holding onto the side of the plane. A thousand feet above the ground. Hold on, if I zoom in, then... Enlarge. Ah. Doctor. I know. That face. I know. It's horrible. I feel the draft coming in. I'm sorry, but you're going to have to explain this, Doctor. Because I have... One minute you're taking me home, having promised to take me home. The next, you're frightening me to death. Now, I'm owned... Hang on, I thought I told you to hold them to that lever. Oh... It wasn't important, was it? Anti-grav buffer. Takes about, ooh, seven minutes to shut down the engines. Only, won't you let go? So, we do what she did. We fall. No! The Electra? is grounded. Fuselage chewed up like paper. We'll need water again soon. But this hellscape? It is not dunes of sand. It is silver ash and silver dust. I must confess, I am certainly not confident as to our chances of survival. And even if the engines were salvageable, if there was a remote possibility that Fred and I could escape... Do you hear that? I do. There! It's coming down fast. It's a shed. Come on, bring the crampon. Amelia! It is a shed, but it says police. Never seen anything like this before. In theory, the doors should open outward. In theory? I've seen her before. Her? Amelia, keep back from it. If there's combustive material in there... Fred, give me the crampon. Why? Hello? What the hell? Sorry to trouble you, but could you save our lives? Crampon, now! Right. 
Hold on in there. Grab hold of this. Climb up. Come on, that's it. Take my hand. That's it, I've got you. Fred, help her down, will you? You all right? I am now, thank you. You're safe now. Deep breaths. Ah, uh, I know you. Ah, huh? here it comes. Oh, heavens, it is you, isn't it? I rather suspect it is. Amelia Earhart. At your service. Who do I have the pleasure of rescuing? I'm... Um... Hold on. It'll come to you in a moment. Nancy. Nancy Foster. Ah, what a coincidence. Got a cousin named Nancy. Oh, oh hugs. I love a hug. Sorry to cut you off, darling. Oh, good heavens, sorry. Uh, hello, not forgetting me anytime soon, I hope. Doctor. He's in one of his grumpy moods. Here he comes. Oh, look at you. Come on, big guy. Oh, someone take this toolbox from me. <coughs> this is just crazy. You take the toolbox, Fred. <laughs> Oh, I'll have to lock her up. Much obliged. You're right, Nancy. Irresponsible child. Oh, well, I'm delighted to see you two. You almost killed us both. Look at the TARDIS! How will we get back home? If I know her, the old girl will pull through. But I must admit, Doctor, I've never seen her this broken. You know about the TARDIS? You know the Doctor. I'm beginning to think she does. Drained of Archon energy. Might even need to regenerate. Oh, what do I put you through, eh? But if the engines are open, they'll soak up any stray drops of energy bleeding through the fissure. Refuel. Given time. Which we may not have. So, Amelia Earhart. The nameless Doctor. Just thought I'd drop in. Timing couldn't be better. Landing could use work. She can't get us out of here either, then. No. And if we are where I think we are, we're in a lot of trouble. Still, we'll sort about, eh, won't we, Fred? I'm sorry, I'm rather convinced we've never met. Oh, well, this is Nancy Foster, and I'm the Doctor. Wait, Fred is in... Frederick Joseph Noonan, friend of my friends. Come on, we'll take you both to the Electra. The Lockheed Electra? That's her. That storm's getting worse. <laughs> then let's get moving. Do you know where we are? Well, it's not Howland Island. That's just a drop in the ocean. The Electra crash landed, the fuselage torn clean open. We can't establish radio contact. It's as if there's a smoke screen. We're isolated. And the storm? That's been constant ever since we arrived. Makes sense. That's a bombardment of chronon particles, living and dying over and over again. What we came through, it's a time fissure. The Master's experiments with time? Yeah, could well be. Oh no, not him again. Although, was it the hot one? Which hot one? The one with the beard. Which one with the beard? The one who wore black. Yeah, well, which one? Hold on. If you can't establish radio contact, you're not generating the recording which brought us here. Well, to be fair, to generate a recording like that is beyond the realm of human technology. You knew then. Had an itch. We don't want to stay and get caught in a vortex blizzard. That could be very nasty indeed. We give the TARDIS time to regenerate and in the meantime fix up... Aha! There she is, the Lockheed Electra. Oh Lord, it's extraordinary! I could have never imagined! I'm afraid it's not quite the flying laboratory you may have read about in the press. Oh, I've worked with worse, believe me. Did I say worse? Sorry, a bit rude. I mean, no, no, it's, it's very good. Very, very good workmanship. Twin engines? Twin engines. Nice. Good. Could be worse. Could be Bessie. Could be what? Old Bessie. My Lockheed Vega 5. Oh, oh, oh. Right. <laughs> so, the nameless doctor. Can she fly again? No reason why she shouldn't be able to. Give me an hour. Sorry. You mean you're gonna fix her up? Of course. Uh, pass me my toolbox, Fred. There we go. Thank you. I've performed maintenance on the TARDIS for thousands of years. This piece of cake. Oh, uh, whoops. Mergen nuts. Need some Mergen nuts. Practical and edible. Nancy, a little bit of help. What do you think? Let's give him his hour. If we even have an hour. Trying the radio again. Right. I'll talk to Amelia. 
As in Amelia Earhart, the real Amelia Earhart. Look, there she is. How can she be standing there? She's not. She's sitting down. She smells like oil and coffee. It's the best smell. I'm sorry, is that a bit strange? A little bit. All these years they spent looking for her. She was trapped here. She fell out of the world and we never knew where she went. Well, from her perspective, it's only been a few hours. And we can save her. That's what we came to do. Save Amelia. Yes, of course. That's what we do. But don't let on. Why ever not? We know Amelia and Fred went missing. They don't. So? History is delicate. Foreknowledge is dangerous. And you expect me to be comfortable with keeping a secret like that from her? Look, I ask you to trust me. <laughs> I'll leave you to it. Miss Foster? Oh, gosh, just Nancy is fine. I mean, so long as it's fine with you. Of course, be a darling and pass us that wrench. Oh, oh yes. Can I help you at all? I doubt it. I don't think I can even help myself, but thanks. So, Nancy, tell me a bit about yourself. What do you do? Come to think of it, what year are you from? Oh. Pardon me if that's an inappropriate question. It's like asking how old you are. Oh, no, no, not at all. 1941. I suppose I'm... Well, no, I am. I am an ambulance driver. Part of the night watch. That's wonderful. You know, I was a VAD during the Great War. I... I know. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been hard. It could be. Not everything could be patched up. Bodies blown apart, broken... Men, boys, hell on earth. Thank God that's all over. Yeah. You're a long way from home then. Must be weird. Yeah. Sorry, it's not really falling out of the world that I can't quite comprehend. I mean, I've seen your face in photographs. I heard your voice on the radio, read your books. Ah, you're a fan. Oh, who wouldn't be? All those women seeing what you were doing flying in the canary. How could they not want to look up at the sky and imagine themselves up there with you? You keep talking like that, Miss Foster. I'm gonna start weeping. <laughs> <laughs> and you made it. Didn't you? Look at you. In the TARDIS. Seeing the stars. You've been in the TARDIS then. Just a short trip. As a thank you for saving the doctor. I hooked up with the one with the flaming sword. <laughs> Took me up to see the stars. It was... A bit much for me, if I'm honest. It's just... I don't think I belong up there. Now, there's the thing. Nancy, let me tell you something. When I set off to travel around the world to be the first woman to pull it off, I wrote my Georgia letter. And I wrote, and I quote, I want to do it because I want to do it. Women must try to do things if men have tried. When they fail, their failure must be but a challenge to others. Or something like that. So, do you want to do it? Come on. <laughs> Where are we going? Over the dune. I want to show you something. Uh, this what you're looking for? Ah, thank you. Amelia was using it. So, Doctor. So, Fred. If we do get out of this alive, when do I get a look inside this shed of yours? The shed that fell out of the sky, this TARDIS. Well, when we're not facing life and death, yeah, you can take a look inside her. Her? Ah, sorry, uh, look inside her. That sounded better in my head. Well, not better, just fine. Well, not fine, you know. Go oh, drop me nut again. The fuel situation's pretty severe. Well, I can synthesize a few drops. Just hope I don't synthesize tomato soup by mistake. Again. Is there anything you can't do? You'd be surprised. I don't think anything could surprise me anymore. Look at us, we've both fallen out of the world. Both had damn bad luck. Well, I was in fact looking for you and Amelia. That's why I came through the fissure. Now my tarnish is in ruins. And Nancy. 
Well, I've stranded her here as well. So you were staging a rescue mission? Not going very well, I'm afraid. <laughs> the gesture is appreciated, but... Well, forgive me, you may speak English, you may dress English, but... I'm an alien. Nothing wrong with that, my friend. From another planet. Ah. You probably weren't expecting that. It would explain a great deal. Who knows what's out there, but... If you truly are from... Outer space... Why would you be looking for Amelia and me? Oh, enough about me. What about you? Why did you and Amelia want to circumvent the globe? Travel the world? Well, Amelia had it in her, but sometimes I think Manning was right. Manning? Harry. He was the real navigator, shall we say. I was something of a spare part. But Amelia wanted me to come. Harry left us before last takeoff. He sensed something was wrong. But you stayed with Amelia. And look where it's brought us. This is my fault. And now we're stranded. George will be wondering where Amelia has gone. I may never see Mary again. Nancy. Where's Nancy? She and Amelia were just... Wait. Nancy? Amelia! Any idea where they could have gone? Amelia surveyed the area when we arrived. Did she now? Only within one mile radius, though. We agreed. We have to find them. Come on. Now, look at that. It's extraordinary. Like a spire reaching into the sky. A tower. Doesn't it seem to change? Sculpt itself before your eyes. Yes. Shall we have a closer oh, look? Don't do that! Creepy tower in a wasteland. Why did nobody tell me about this? You really want to investigate the tower? Do we even have the time? We were brought here for a reason. But by what? Perhaps the answer lies in there. Amelia, we agreed. Just a quick look inside. <sighs> right. Come on then, team. To the tower. Structures suffering from temporal corrosion. Castle built on shifting sands. Is it safe? Doubt it. Fallout shelter? Possibly. I'll go first. Time sensitive and all that. Doctor? Well, come on, you lot. You two, Fred. Both of us together, one each end steady as we go. Sorry? Oh, never mind. to collect your luggage and have your ticket ready. Calendar maps available from the service desk. It's like a terminal. Who's that at the desk? Are they waving to us? Welcome. How can I help you? How can I help you? How can I help you? Can I help you? More ghosts? Perhaps we're the ghosts. Calendar maps. What on earth is this strange device? If I had to guess... Coffee machine. Oh. Come on, team. Onwards and upwards. Let's have a goosey upstairs. Doctor. Ah, I see them. That's what we saw. Fred, the face in the window, the thing on the plane. And what we saw in that recording. But there's dozens of them. How come they haven't noticed us? Plugged directly into the systems. No awareness of the surroundings. To them, we're as immaterial as dust. Yes, but what are they? I don't know. Talking of dust, they have been here a long time. Time. Doctor! Time. Time, time, time. Of course! Look, through the glass. 
Holy fascinating. We're on an observation deck. We're looking into the maelstrom. The heart of the time vortex itself. We should be going mad. I think we have gone mad. This is a guidance tower. Time traffic control. These images we're seeing, they're not geographical. They're time pictures. And these? This lot of the operators. Control units navigating the time machines through the vortex. My people used them in the old days. I thought they were all gone. Your people? They may very well be alive, but not in our understanding of the word. We're not safe here, then. Of course not. Quantum shielding's down, and one of the towers falling to pieces. Shouldn't we be getting out of here, then? Now this is interesting. like a mosaic. Shards of hourglass. Splinters of what was, is, will be, and will never come to be. I want to do it because I want to do it. It's me. My whole life. This tower's key to your time stream, Amelia. Programming coordinates on the relativity map, opening tears in the fabric of the universe. Gateways to multiple realities, all parallel to each other. We're looking into alternative timelines. survive and lead a full life, or my body is never found. Which is right? Doctor? Nancy? I'm sorry. Amelia. I got you killed as well. No. I did. I do! We don't know that. Look. What? Look! Oh. Everyone keep back. Doctor, don't! Hello. What is it you want? Why is it looking at you like that? <laughs> ah! Doctor! It's okay. Let me crush my... It's a stat plate. Oh, my clavicle. My dining post. Oh. Oh. Meanwhile, back at the wrench. Whew. Thank you, Amelia. It's already getting back up again, and it's angry. Oh, great. This is a trap. Set by that thing? Oh, well, sat at your desk for all eternity, it's going to drive you mad. I think it wants to break free. So, you set the coordinates, generated the recording, and waited for somebody to come looking for Amelia Earhart and Fred Noon. We've given it what it wants. Okay, when I say run, run! I can't keep running forever. Right now, it works for me. Amelia, Fred, get ready for takeoff. We're leaving the TARDIS here. Can't get to her quick enough. And she's still drained dry. The Electra is our only chance. Look. Get inside. We haven't got a chance. We give the Doctor time to work out to fight this thing and protect Miss Foster. Now everybody, move! How do we know we can even get the Electra off the ground? I don't know. Amelia. I don't know. Now or never. Life or death, that's the choice. Right, come on. There must be one final flight in you. Put these on. Ow, I can't see a thing through these. Here, let me. Hey, look at you, Snoopy. Who? Uh-oh, here comes the Red Baron. Hold tight. Chops away. Always wanted to say that. Taking her. Into the eye of the storm, Amelia. You can't be serious, surely. I am serious. And don't call me sh 
You know what? Not the time. Are we all okay back there? Nancy? Look! What is all this? It's like shrapnel, but huge. Time machines. Torn apart by the storm. The wreckage is coming towards us. Amelia? Hold tight. They're attracted to something. Some force. I'm just imagining that, aren't I? Well, if you are, we all are. Let's climb through the wreckage. The vulture among the carrion is coming for us. I'm flying blind. Doctor, any advice appreciated. What would happen if we went through one of the gaps in the vortex? We'd be brought into a timeline where we don't belong. That thing's almost upon us. Uh, Amelia, wait. No time. Hold on. Getting something. I recognize that voice. Hello? Leo? Itasca? This is KHAQQ. Amelia? Gallant logged your transmission. You were last reported getting in contact at 0844. Force received. Is everything okay? Over. Listen, Leo, can you tell me the year? The year. The year, you say? Yes. Same as it was before. 1937. 1937. Copy that. Over and out. That thing won't give up, you know. All right, Doctor. Give me a break. Just because I'm not dead. Nancy? What's wrong with her? Nancy! <laughs> Nancy, can I ask you a question? You might not quite understand, but I feel I can trust you. Is that all right? Of course. Yes. Of course. I need you to deliver a message to the doctor. Can you do that for me? The doctor? Doctor who? <laughs> but I never met Amelia before the war. That never happened. How can I be remembering something that never happened? Memories from a timeline that should never have come to pass. The timeline we're in now. But in this reality where you survived, Amelia, you knew. So you used Nancy. Gave her a message to pass into us now. Like setting up landing lights, you mean? Exactly. Nancy, what was the message? I... I can't... remember. You must. It's already fading. You can do it, Nancy. If you want to do it. 25th of July, 1964, 223M Terrace. Remember, Nancy. 25th of July. 1964. 223 North Terrace. Good girl, Nancy. Well done. 223 N Terrace? Do you know it? That's where I was brought up. That's my home. There's something coming through the clouds. Oh, my God. Fred, visual. It, it's a dreadnought. Time glider. Commandeered. And look who the pilot is. Must be operating it by synaptic conduit. That thing. It's never going to stop, is it? Why that date? How are we going to get to 1964? How can we possibly be meeting Amelia there? Because we've got this. A calendar map. Fix it up at the desk. Fred, you're going to navigate us to 1964. Right. I can take a bearing by the stars if I'm right. There. Ah, a boy, Fred. Off we go. It's right on top of us. Into the storm, Amelia. Keep going, Amelia.
Are we all right? Fred? Nancy? Just grand. Yes, I... I'm all right. Doctor? The air heart has landed. <laughs> Not bad, eh? This is where you were brought up? Yeah. Well, Amelia, you came home. But why here? Oh, Amelia. George? My darling, you got the message. I never thought I'd see you again. Hasn't time flown? Oh, my darling. My darling Amelia. Fred, best man at Pan Am. George, I don't... Don't worry. It will be all right. Everything will work out in the end. You must be Nancy Foster. You're George Putnam. Ah, you're a fan. And the doctor. Would you all like to come in? Amelia's waiting. Doctor. Come on. She needs us. Sorry, I thought... Well, didn't you marry again, George? That might have been a possibility. One possible timeline, to be precise. Forgive me. I don't quite understand the details myself, no matter how many times she explains it to me. But in this one, <laughs> well, she couldn't get rid of me. Yeah, you're an old romantic, George. Wait, the date, July 25th. Amelia, it's... The day after my birthday. But if it's 1964... Here we are. She'll just be resting. Amelia? They've arrived. They've come to see you. Hello there. Hello. Fred. Doctor. Nancy? Go on, Nancy. Amelia, you made it. I got older. You lived the life you always deserved. Have a look at that photograph. On the wall. Is that you and me? Folkestone, 1938. <laughs> but how could Amelia know the day she was going to die? Ontological paradox. In this timeline, Amelia returns. Proof's right in front of you. She knew because she remembered receiving the message from herself. Oh, he's being clever again. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't have much time left. And once I do this, the days that should never have come will fade away. Won't they, Doctor? I'm sorry. What a pity. All those years, all those memories, lost in time. Forever. But you saved us, Amelia. You and Nancy. We'll never forget that. Your final flight. What's that? Oh no! Hello, old friend. Keep away from her! No, don't. She asked if nobody interfere. I promised her. I've been waiting for you for the rest of my life. Now here we are, at the end of the line. Gotcha. I think it's time we found some peace. George? Goodbye, my darling. Pilot Bandit Patrol to try and escape. Amelia made it hunt her to the very end of her life just long enough for control to be lost. Now the timeline's contracting, ceasing to exist. 
Goodbye, my darling. George! Goodbye. It worked. The wasteland. The planes come back with us. We haven't got long. The cracking time is sealing. But if we're on the wrong side... So, we need to get to work. Fred, get the plane ready for takeoff. Right. I'll help you. Doctor, couplings. Couplings? Oh! How is she? Still rebuilding. But it might just be possible. You know what you have to do? Fix her up to the Electra. We'll get you airborne. Yeah, yeah. And then the TARDIS will dematerialize. I'll snag you in the field and bring the Electra through into real space time. But we'll have to get this right. The engines don't have a lot of power yet. I have to get as close to the fissure as possible, Amelia. We'll get you up there. Good. Of course. We both know. Don't we? Know what? I'm not your first, Amelia. What are you doing here, Doctor? You came looking for me, but why? What do you need from me? I don't need anything. Everyone needs something from someone. I can't give you what you're looking for, but I can do this one thing. We can save her. Come on, let's fix these couplings. Ready for takeoff? Ah, well done, you two. So, Fred, this is where we say goodbye. Thank you, Doctor. Nancy? It was such an honor. Come here. I'm going to miss you, Amelia. See you on the other side, darling. Go on, don't miss your flight. Come on, Nancy. Goodbye, the nameless doctor. Yeah. Ready? Always. Still got to take the task to the fissure. It's got to take the weight. Can they do it? Come on, Amelia. As close as you can. You're going to say don't do that, aren't you? You're alive! Oh, properly alive as well. Let me help you up. Thanks. Ow. Ugh. Have we made it? Uh, yes. We made it. The TARDIS goes back to our universe. But you said there wasn't any power. The TARDIS should need to be back in our universe. Amelia and Fred. They flung us at the time, Fisher. The engine soaked up the Arctic energy and wrenched us through. Got us to the other side. But to get that sort of momentum, they would have had to... Evasive manoeuvre. They directed the plane away from the crack when the coupling snapped. They threw us in the opposite direction. Perfect thrust. Perfect aim. Ha! Huh. Should have been impossible. Did they come through? Before the wound sealed itself? Well... We've just abandoned them. They saved us and we left them behind. We don't know that. But if there's nothing... We failed! We didn't have any choice. They chose to save us. He knew what she was going to do. I could never guess what Amelia Earhart would do next. This isn't the first time she saved me. And you knew we couldn't save her? I didn't expect. I thought we might just find... Her bones? Her broken body? No. 
It's just there are rules. The laws I've got to obey. You should have saved her. I couldn't. You could have tried. I couldn't. Why would you even go looking for her? If you can't change history, what would possess you to do such a thing? And if you truly are as old as you say you are, why did you have to go back and find her now? I don't have time for this. Don't you dare turn your back on me! Please. Amelia isn't the first person I failed to. I had this friend. And I failed her. I abandoned her to a race called the Daleks. Because of me, she lost ten years of her life. Having to fight a war, like you. And did she? I mean, I don't wish to cause you any distress. No. She lived. But she decided to leave you. Get those ten years back. You don't think she should have left you? I think it's the wisest decision she could have made. And I thank her for doing it. And I... I miss her. That's why you need to go back and find Amelia. If there was some remote possibility, if there was something I could have done, or we could have done, well, it was a risk I was prepared to take. Even worth risking your life. And I won't be doing that again. Quite right. Am I? That's nice. You were wrong to do what you did. But you helped them. And that was worth doing. It's always worth trying. I don't know if I want to stay with you. Hadn't you already made up your mind? I was taking you home. You know I hadn't. Well, I... What was that? Scanner. What's this? Keep going. Nancy. It's gone. What was that then? Scan shows nothing. But they could be out there. Somewhere. I don't know, Nancy. I don't know. Ah, there she is. You'd find something in the wardrobe to your tastes. How do I look? How do you feel? Human. Properly human. And there's your answer. I ask you how I look and your answer is human. Properly human. So, back to the night watch. The night watch. Oh, uh, I have something for you. To take home. Hmm? Photograph of Amelia Earhart and her biggest fan. Oh. oh, it's beautiful. But if that timeline never came to pass, how does the photograph still exist? There are always traces of paths never taken. They don't fade. They they never leave you. <laughs> oh, a hug. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, you're soaking my jacket now. <laughs> Sorry. Can you show me? Oh, oh. Uh, well, I, I've just parked us somewhere with a nice view. Uh, hang on. Uh, reception's a bit rubbish, but. No, not on the scanner. Open the doors. You sure? I want to do it because I want to do it. All those stars. Like icebergs. And the moon. And there. <sighs> like the view. I do. You have been listening to Doctor Who, The Autopilot by Harry Draper. The Doctor was played by Miles Taylor, with Izzy Walton as Nancy Foster. Amelia Earhart, Lauren Keeling, Fred Noonan, October Moore, George Putnam, Anthony Rock, Leo, Tim Watson, Airport Tannoy, Daniel Warren, 
Staff member, Lev Myskin. Sound design and editing, Miles Taylor. Cover art, Marshall Tankersley. Writer, Harry Draper. Music, Big Finish Productions. Theme tune, Marshall Tankersley and Simon Bowser. Produced by Miles Taylor for Tailored Vision Productions.